Hey, what's going on, guys? Radio Graffiti here, and today we are going to be looking at the comic book movies of 2021, and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. So, coming in at dead last, which is appropriate because this character is dead, number seven, we have Black Widow. Yeah, um, sorry to the three females that might actually watch this video, but I thought this movie was complete garbage. Black Widow really came and went, didn't it? Like, nobody really talked about this movie after, like, a week or two after it came out. It was like a fart in the wind. It came and then you just forgot about it in, like, five seconds. I mean, the villain was just complete dog shit. You got some fat Harvey Weinstein looking motherfucker. And then Taskmaster, everybody feels like that they just completely ruined him and... Well, that's the problem. It wasn't actually a him. It was a her. And then the Taskmaster overall as a villain was just pretty weak. And then just the movie in general. Like, there's really nothing to go rewatch. There's no other reason I'd ever want to watch that movie ever again. It was pretty boring and painful the first time. The next two on this list are also fall into the same category of just mid. Which means, yes, number six is Shang-Chi. Sorry, I know, blasphemy. I know it's got like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, but I don't know. I just kind of thought the movie was really mediocre. Didn't really care for it. Fight scenes were okay, I guess, but besides that, it was a pretty mid Marvel movie. The comedy was really stupid. I really fucking hated Katie. She was a very annoying character. I just wish she would have shut up and she wasn't even in the movie. Just Shang-Chi overall was just a pretty bland character. I barely even remember who Shang-Chi is. The whole movie was just very boring. I don't think I'll ever watch it ever again. Which is the problem because I love comic book movies and I love Marvel. So I should be hyped for this shit. I should be wanting to watch it 20 million times in one day. But unfortunately I didn't really feel that way with Shang-Chi. It just felt like another formulaic Marvel movie that they just shit out to make some easy money. At number 5 I have The Eternals. It wasn't as complete dog shit as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be much worse than what it actually was, but it was still a pretty mediocre movie. Like, the first hour of the movie, it, basically nothing happens besides the Eternals are just like, we have to reunite everybody. And then that's just basically what they do for like the whole first hour. They like reunite and then they break up and then they reunite. And it's just a very boring movie. Marvel really didn't put up their best this year, did they? Eternals is a very forgettable film, just like Shang-Chi and Black Widow, in my opinion. Now we're at to number 4, which is Venom 2. Now Venom 2, aka Venom Let There Be Carnage, I didn't think it was the worst thing ever. It's kind of like the first Venom, where it's like, you know it's really stupid, but it's like fun stupid. It was entertaining stupid. At least this film entertained me. That's more than what I can say for Eternal, Saint chi and Black Widow. And I like that Venom 2, they kept it short, sweet, and to the point. They didn't feel the need to waste our time with a bunch of boring side characters or shove. 200 other characters in the movie so they can sell a whole bunch of toys or anything like that. They just kept it short and sweet and to the point. I mean, I'm aware the movie is completely stupid. I did a full review on this. So if you want to go check out my review, I'll leave the description for all these videos that I've done reviews on in the description down below. But as far as Venom 2 goes, it's short, sweet. It's got some okay action. The villain's kind of comedic by how cartoonish it is. But the villain still works a lot better than these other movies. Which was just very just boring and just made me want to go to sleep. Number three, we have Zack Snyder's Justice League. I really enjoy Justice League, actually. It was a lot better than that dog shit version we got in 2017. I feel like Zack Snyder's Justice League was like therapy for all of us DC fans who were traumatized by that dog shit that came out in 2017. This is the therapy we needed. We needed this movie to come out and be good. And sure enough, it was good. The only reason it's at number three is because... It's really fucking long. Like, this movie is four hours long. Do you know how hard it is to watch a four hour long movie? That's basically like a whole plan right there. You have to plan to watch this movie. Like, holy shit, is it long. And it's good, but like, a lot of it is just kind of, you know, eh. And a lot of it kind of goes on too long. Like, I feel like a lot of the movie could have been cut out. Like, all the slow motion scenes kind of just fell at the runtime, and we didn't need the Wonder Woman weird thing that Zack Snyder has in the movie playing every time Wonder Woman farts. <laughs> The entire movie feels a little bit dragged out, so for that reason it's at number 3. But I still really enjoyed it though, it's got great characters, I really enjoyed the action, and I'm a huge DC fan, so seeing the Justice League in live action, you know, it's a win-win for me. It's just unfortunate, I don't think we're ever going to get a follow-up to this movie, unfortunately, because DC doesn't like making money or satisfying their fans. And at number 2, I have The Suicide Squad. 
The Suicide Squad was actually a very enjoyable film. I was actually kind of surprised by it because I wasn't really expecting much from this film. I thought it was going to be another stupid ripoff of Guardians of the Galaxy. And sure, it feels like a rated R version of Guardians of the Galaxy, but Guardians of the Galaxy is fantastic, so it's not really a negative. All the characters were pretty funny and enjoyable. It was very entertaining. It had great action and had entertaining characters. I love the kind of dark humor that the movie has, and I like that the movie actually makes you feel like you're watching villains. These actually feel like bad guys, unlike the Suicide Squad we got back in 2016, where they just call themselves bad guys this whole time, and then we're just supposed to believe it, even though we never see them do anything villainous. It's kind of like Zack Snyder's Justice League, where uh, DC fans needed therapy from the dog shit that came out in 2017 by Josh Sweden. We DC fans also needed therapy from the dog shit Suicide Squad movie that came out in 2016, and I feel like this movie was some pretty good therapy. I feel much more relieved. I feel much more opened up. Thank you, DC, for making this movie. Thank you for actually having some style in your films. Something I feel is very absent from comic book movies nowadays, as you can see from my bottom three. I like movies that have some kind of personality to them, and you can really feel James Gunn's presence throughout this film. And yes, as you may have noticed, I might be missing a certain web crawler in this list. Which means, number one goes to Spider-Man No Way Home. And no, it's not because it's the most recent movie to come out, it's because it's genuinely, in my opinion, the best comic book movie that's released this year. Which hasn't been too high of a standard, if I'm going to be honest. It's been kind of a mediocre year for comic book movies, but next year looks a lot better. But for No Way Home... I mean, it's just incredible what they were able to pull off with No Way Home. They were able to satisfy Spider-Man fans from different generations. I feel like they've been building up to this movie basically since 2002 with Spider-Man 1. They give satisfying conclusions to the old characters while also telling a very interesting story with our new characters. It's kind of hard to go into my in-depth thoughts of the film without giving any spoilers for the actual movie, so I'll just say I've done a spoiler review and I've also done a spoiler-free review, and I'll leave those links in the description down below if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts about No Way Home, but I feel like No Way Home is like the ultimate Spider-Man movie. It might just be the best Spider-Man movie ever made. I don't know where I'd rank it as far as MCU is concerned, but as far as Spider-Man, I feel like it's definitely in the conversation for, if not top two, the best Spider-Man movie. No Way Home has really changed the game for comic book movies moving forward, and I'm very interested to see where they go with this character and for a fourth Spider-Man movie. It also just feels like a dream being able to see Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus and Sandman and the Lizard, and Electro, all these just big baddies from all the previous Spider-Man movies back on the big screen again with Tom Holland facing off against them. It just feels so unreal to see these characters back. This is every Spider-Man fan's wet dream. But yeah, that's my ranking for the comic book movies of 2021. Sorry, there's no animated movies included or anything else that's not, that's supposed to be like technically a comic book movie, that's, but it's really kind of not a comic book movie. Like nobody knows it as a comic book, but they kind of count it as a comic book. I looked it up on Google and it said Snake Eyes was a comic book movie. I was like, I don't know what Snake Eyes is and I don't really care to watch it. So basically it's just a Marvel and DC list, I guess you could say. But yeah, that's my 2021 comic book movie rating. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. If you disagree, that's fine. Let me know what your ranking is down in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed the video.